This is where we started the first sprayers. Heavily modified since. That's the old house. So I'm James Curry, chairman here at Hustler. Yeah, I remember when we, we lived on the orchard originally. Don't remember too much about that, but Dad would, he was more interested in making stuff than than doing orchard work, pruning, spraying, mowing. And so he'd try and invent something to make the job easier. I'm Arnie Carey and I work in the research and development division at Hustler Equipment. It all started back in 1961 where Grandpa had an orchard down Rapbury Road in Twyford in Hastings. The orchard was going well but the he started tinkering with machinery and made various implements and started moving into making machinery such as spray equipment and forklifts. Basically make what people ask him to make. So it was a variety of stuff that got made. I remember the sprayer, making a big folding boom sprayer. So it had a folding mechanism and it would fold out to 100, 100 feet, 33 metres. I think at that stage it was the widest in the southern hemisphere for a sprayer size. And there it was, you know, parked in the middle of the road and spread right across the road. That sprayer was utilised by Watties um, for spraying their tomatoes, which is the same Watties tomato sauce that we um, put on our food today. So it was quite cool to be able to produce equipment for a, a big player like that back in those days. He grabbed the rams, old aircraft landing gear rams, and that was that did the job for folding the booms in and out. And then he rigged up a, um, a truck axle under the sprayer and connected it to the drawbar of the tractor so as it went around the corner the, the wheels would fall on the same tracks as the tractor. They still use that stuff now, they still use that concept now. In 1965 Grandpa sold the orchard and moved to a property in Ikonui Road. At the time he would have been working on sp the sprayers mostly and also developing into the forklifts where he saw a need with the orchards, a, a good forklift for the front of a tractor. I remember when we lived down Ikonui Road, um, had a shed there on the side of the house bit of land, it was probably an acre. And yeah, he used to make little garden tractors and we'd be riding around on those and then we'd try and rig up a set of harrows for the back of it and do a bit of cultivation. More to have the fun of driving around than trying to cultivate anything. <laughs> um, I think it was 1965. Um, Grandpa just struck a deal with Winstones, who was a bit larger company back in those days, um, building sprayers under license to them. And that was one of our first export products, which was exported to, I think it was Fiji and Hawaii, Bermuda, um, and even Australia. And that was some of the air blast sprayers. So obviously, Winstones recognised how good these sprayers were that Grandpa was building. They wanted Grandpa to make them for them under the Winstone brand. In 1970, as the needs of the manufacturing part grew bigger, he moved to a facility down Stonycroft Street. This allowed a lot more room for having more employees, having more machinery, and setting a proper production line for building the different machinery. Also, there was a lot of innovative ideas that Grandpa had had, being that he had worked around orchards all his life, including the steering forklift system to allow the operator to um, position their pallets easily. This was quite innovative and allowed orchardists to you know have a far more efficient operation than they than they normally would. So after school we'd just tinker away in his garage. We'd spend a bit of time building go-karts and little contraptions because we're a bunch of petrol heads. Um, we like to build things that went fast. In 1990 as the business grew bigger with the advent of the chainless range of models we needed more room once again and moved to 1416 Amahu Road, which is a bigger facility production. Hello, I'm Debbie and I've worked at Hustler for um, over six and a half years. My father um, actually built the original um, Hustler building, 1416 Amahu Road, back in the 80s. These original front doors used to be red. If you look up, you can see the railing system we used to use. Me and my brother were clambering around building a lot of this steel worker in the railing. I remember, still remember clambering around on various forklifts and forklift cages and the very first chainless we were testing in this paddock on the back of our Fergie, one three, uh, Fergie 34. We, were, we did our first demo with the dealers with the prototype 
Trainers 2000 right where we stand. This allowed a lot more expansion and over the years continued to be added onto section by section and nearby buildings sort of taken over as things such as the sprayers took off. So there's a lot of expansion during those years and that production facility, it gave us a lot of lot of time there. Yeah, no, this, this was fantastic, you know. It was all wired and lit and did, did everything we needed. As the business grew in the 1416 Amahu Road building, it became abundantly obvious that we needed more room once again. Hence, we start planning in 2017, we started the building of this across the road, building a custom facility to better handle this production. This was finished in 2019, which gave us a lot more room, a lot more capacity, and allowed us to set it up in the most efficient way that we wanted to have it. The Currys really started this thing. From 1961, they started making farm equipment, and from there it's been almost non-stop growth. We're developing a product, it, it always stems from a customer need or a customer problem that they're actually fa facing. But the catalyst to our innovation stems from, from a problem. Because if we're not solving a problem, if we're innovating for the sake of innovation, well, we're not really <coughs> adding much value. So when we have a problem, we see it as an opportunity to make our product better, stand out from the competition. Um, it's not that we've got this problem and we're going to put our heads in the sand. It's like, okay, what are we going to do and what are we going to come up with to make it better? You know, what's the next iteration going to look like? Um, the first couple of ideas often never work. Um, and you have to go to a, something left field and, and try that. So a large majority of the, the development time is spent in understanding what the actual problem is. Um, often the actual problem can be disguised quite well so understanding that is key getting our heads together is invaluable that's where you get the best outcomes really as i say you don't always get success you just keep on trying and it might be too big might be too heavy might be too expensive might be too whatever so you got to keep on going and then you come up with something often there's some willing farmer or orchardist or cropping operator keen to try your latest invention and give the feedback on it, and that feedback's invaluable. As sincere as I can be, this is one of my favorite pieces of equipment of everything I have. I'm very impressed that of the build quality with Hustler. The welds are exceptional, the, the paint. It's put together with pride and care, and that's really hard to find these days. There's always things you haven't thought of, so talking to those guys and then um, just working with them really. And then if the guy loves using it, well you're onto a good thing. So what's the next thing we can do? <laughs> By triggering our innovation off a customer problem, um, there's, a, there's a need there from day one. <clears throat> and when there's a real problem that we're trying to solve, it gives us something tangible to aim for and to actually know that we've succeeded in overcoming that problem. So the farmer, it's about the problem he's trying to solve more than the machine. And I guess it's exactly the same in our own factory. We're looking for some way to solve that all the time. What makes it easier to handle, safer to handle, faster to use, a better quality, better finish. One of our values is achieve more every day. So we're teaching our team here internally to think outside the box, to kind of get a grasp of what this DNA is because that's what's really taken us to where we are and it's what's going to take us through the future. So this is our welding fabrication department. As you can see we have set it up so it's um, quite universal. Same with our assembly department. We've set it up very open plan because uh, with the way the R&D team are going they're designing machines all the time and they're getting bigger and bigger so I don't know what we're going to be making in this um, department in two years time, hence why we've designed it pretty open plan, same with assembly, just to try and cater for all these uh, crazy machines that they're inventing. When it comes to sales, marketing, um, production, the way we produce things out here in the factory, 
um, the way we containerize or distribute um, things through our dealer network, you know, even how we innovate our dealer network. Um, it all comes back to what's this DNA of innovation? How do we innovate that? How do we achieve more out of that? I mean, the idea of lean is continuous improvement. So sort of my theory is each week we're making those small 1% improvements and then a few months down the track, you end up uh, making some really good progress. And um, by having that mindset of always uh, rethinking the every day, as they say, um, basically you're making those small 1% changes and um, over time that adds up very quickly. Yeah, as, as Hustler's growing, um, this thing's got a lot bigger than just a Hawke's Bay New Zealand company, right? So if, um, if, when we brought out Robertson Manufacturing down the South Island, that gave us another manufacturing facility in the South Island. Um, we've also got another office down there. And then we've got locations offshore. So we've got America, that's based in Minneapolis. We've got the UK, we've got France, we've got Australia with locations and stock holding for spare parts and whole goods. And then we're also dealing with a number of other countries, might be 12 different countries in Europe. Once you have the, the customers educated, they know that what it'll do, it'll genuinely save, save maintenance, it'll genuinely save feed, and will genuinely add dollars to the bottom line of a farm or rancher. So from that point of view, it's very awesome the way that you can actually um, talk to someone, look them in the eye, and know that your product's actually going to do what you say it's going to. With our staff, we like to retain our staff as long as possible, um, both from experience point of view and you know, having a consistency of of throughput. So for example, Trevor over here. Trevor's been, <coughs> how long have you been with us, Trev? 19 this year. 19 years, been with us. Um, he's, a, you're at a dispatch manager, Trevor. Yep, that's right. Yep. So Charge yeah. of all containers coming in and going out and anything, looking after the customer. Yep. Booking and loading containers and trucks going out the gate. So, yep. I mean, <coughs> Trev's just one example of some of the staff that we've got here that have been, been here a long time. And our staff turnover rate is actually is actually very, very low. Um, and I guess it just helps us long term. I don't know what to say about that. I get looked that, after. But... I get looked after. That's why. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Great company to work for. Um, in Trev's example, I mean, a lot of his family have worked here. His wife's here now doing the cleaning. Um, and you've had both of your sons both working sons, here. Yeah. Hayden's, uh, Hayden for Gary. My dad works here also. He's probably been here for five years and uh, my wife also works here. She's um, in, in the admin sales assistant role. Kia ora, my name is uh, William Coral Henderson, um, also known as Slim. Most people around here call me Slim. I had worked here for about 15 years, 14, 15 years. I'd worked in uh, quite a few um, industries and uh, for a few different pl um, companies and uh, I was uh, really taken with the way they looked after their workers. James, he was running the company at that stage. You could actually approach him with any, any concerns or anything and he would listen to you. Yeah. I, f I found him to be um, quite a fair, um, honest sort of uh, person. You listen. One of the big reasons why um, employees tend to stay at Hustler Equipment for a long period of time, speaking for oneself, is um, the trust that they will give an employee. Um, they're not constantly looking over your shoulder and they will basically, they trust each employee to do their job and I think that goes a long way. My name is Paul Anderson. Uh, I started at a uh, hustler when I was 17 years old um, and uh, the rest is history really. I'm Melanie Curry and I'm Treasury Accountant here at Hustler Equipment. I've worked here for about eight years now. Um, yeah, I started straight out of high school 
um, yeah, came on as accounts payable yeah, and have sort of progressed through to finance and treasury cash management. Well, the Carries are a big family, so I'm not like really closely related. It's got a very good family environment, um, being a family business, and yeah, I think that definitely contributes to the turnover rate. Um, people generally work here quite a long time and yeah, it seems to go back, you know, generations. Yeah. Um, I had an auntie that worked here before me. Um, you know, my sister has worked here. My dad still works here now and yeah. I think the, the team enjoy coming here and I'd always say that it's not always money. I think it's just as important to have a, a positive culture. Um, it's about come Sunday night and actually uh, looking forward to work in, in the morning rather than uh, it being a drag. The R&D department has really grown since I was um, first here. Ah. I can't really remember being too heavily involved in the containers. Um, now we're probably doing more containers in a week than we would have done in six months. With the way technology changing, I don't quite know where Hustler will be in the next six years, but I do know that we'll be scaling up to continue to grow in the same fashion we have and to be able to continue to deliver products that are innovative and in new ways. When you're a market leader, you've got all these guys trying to, trying to catch up to you and trying to um, you might say take advantage of your IP or the, or the um, innovation that you've brought to the table. So we, we as a company are seeking to fast track this innovation and technology pathway so that we're leaders in that field as well. Um, in the past we've been leaders in the, in the mechanisation side of things but um, we see ourselves as leaders and there's a lot of things that we've got on the table even today that the market would um, have no idea about that will be that we will bring to the market in say two three and even five years to, down the track we've got less time to do more the pace of life is faster everything's faster so we've got to ramp up faster so it's been closer to markets probably end up manufacturing in different markets and just yeah expanding what we're doing we tend to train up most of the employees here ourselves rather than looking for skills. So as I say, we look for attitude. If you've got the right attitude and you want to learn, um, you can uh, become a very good uh, welder, assembler, powder coder. So I think that's pretty cool, a thing that we do here at Hustler Equipment. And they care about people and they care about, about you. As, as, or me as an individual, and, and not just me, everyone in the organisation, but I feel that there's a genuine care for the um, for their employees. Um, so that, that makes a big difference when you don't have that sense of care or um, empathy, I suppose, with, with your workers um, or employees. It's, you don't feel part of the team, I suppose, as we are. I've always felt that they've always you know, looked after me um, over the years that I've been here, which is one of the reasons I've probably stayed so long. And when you kind of think about this, you think about the reasons why this has continuously grown, and you think about that, I think it's the genuine care they had for the employees, and it's continued the whole way through. And then on the other side, it's they've consistently and constantly built innovative equipment, and it's really in the DNA of the company and the family. And you put those two things together and you get a synergy for growth. And it's just carried on and on and it's going to carry on as well.